something is happening in the heavens. There's a, there's a, there's a shifting, there's a shattering, there's something is going on. It looked like almost like a dim dimensional shift that was taking place. It's like watching a Star Wars movie and warp speed. Everything just went, you know, just into a streak and then to a flash of light and boom. Like the Apostle Paul says, I don't know if I was in the body or out of the body, all I know is I was caught up to paradise. Well, I'm not claiming it was equal to that, but I'm saying it was more than a dream somehow. Because to this day, all these years later, it is so fresh. I can still smell the smells. I can still see the sights. Yes, I could smell smells. I mean, it was unbelievable. It was like I physically was somewhere else. Um, but it wasn't an out-of-body experience that I knew I was out of my body. It was like, I thought it was a dream until I woke up, and then it was so starting, startlingly real that um, it took me several years before I shared it with anybody, because it kind of freaked me out. Here's what happened. So I go to bed, go to sleep. All right. In my dream slash vision, whatever, I dreamed that I was standing in a field, and it was nighttime, and I was looking at the expanse of the sky, I mean, it, I might have been in big sky country or something. I mean, was, there's no mountains, there were no buildings in front of me, just the horizon, the beauty of the heavens. It was breathtaking. Behind me, I could hear the sounds of life. I could hear horns honking, people talking, conversations. I couldn't make out specific words, but like multitudes of people talking, cheering, maybe they're watching a ball game. Heard babies crying, you know, not in terror or anything, just baby talk and crying and people talking. It was the sounds of life. I never turned around. I had, I don't know if I was prohibited from doing that. I had no inkling to do it. I was looking at the expanse of the sky. Beautiful, beautiful night. Hearing all of the sounds behind me of life. Not a care in the world. As I was watching the stars and constellations, and I can remember my dream identifying a couple of the constellations that I know and, and literally seeing them. And, and then the next thing I know is that the stars begin to take on colors. And I see these colors in my dream. And I can remember thinking, not only is this beautiful, but this is very unusual. I don't know that I've ever seen this phenomenon before. And then I would see things streaking across the sky, maybe like a comet or something, but it was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen with colors involved in it. And then some of the constellations began to kind of almost swirl, not, not like, like a fan, but I mean, just kind of started moving like that. And then they started shifting positions a little bit. Then I can remember thinking, okay, something supernatural is going on. Now all this is happening in my mind as I'm watching, I'm still hearing the sounds of life. Then I hear the sounds of life behind me getting a little more panicked. It's like they're seeing it too, and they don't know what to make of it. I can remember that I didn't have a feeling of terror I had a feeling of awe and wonder and, and thinking something is happening in the heavens. There's a, there's, a, there's a shifting, there's a shattering, there's something is going on. Supernatural. And then the stars appeared, literally, to fall from the sky. Not just fall, but to be zooming towards the earth. At the same time that it looked like, well... Now I know the scriptures that talk about the heavens being rolled up like a scroll. It looked like almost like a dim dimensional shift that was taking place. And then the streaking coming down and then the sounds of life behind me. Holy terror. People were shrieking, screaming. You could hear people, oh my God. And, they, you know, and then sirens were going off and warning sounds. And it was like something cataclysmic was happening. I'm still watching it. It was happening so quickly. And I remember thinking... Well, why don't, I don't have any fear in me. The next thing I know, there is a presence beside me. I'm not allowed to look, or I didn't look, but I was aware that I was in the midst, the arms of a presence, or in, in the midst of a presence, a, 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 a personal presence. And the next thing I know, I'm just being lifted up. And I'm not, and I'm not talking about some kind of cheesy movie of the rapture or anything. It's just, it was real. It was smooth. It was peaceful. I look over to my left, and now the whole time I hadn't looked left or right, but now look, my, my wife is right there. And she's such a woman of God. And she knew the Lord long before I did. And she's looking at me, she's smiling. And we just had this knowing look. We didn't even communicate, but we knew what was happening. 
and we get whisked up and the next thing I know it's like watching a Star Wars movie and warp speed. Everything just went, you know, just into a streak and then to a flash of light and boom, it's like we bursted through another dimension, if you will, a barrier of some sort. No fear ever. And I'm still aware of this presence that we were under the control of a benevolent presence. And the next thing I saw was we busted through, I'm just gonna call it a dimensional shift. We busted through another dimension. And before me was the most beautiful, it, it had to be what the earth looked like when it was first formed by the hand of God. Every, the colors were so vibrant. The smells, the air smelled like potpourri. I can still smell that sometimes. I saw what looked like villages, um, beautiful, beautiful little homes and I could, you, flowers everywhere. You could hear children off in the distance just laughing, having a blast. People, the peace was overwhelming. The sun was just magnificent. And, and I can remember asking the presence, is this heaven? Is this paradise? And then I heard the voice and it just said, this is where you will live forever. Welcome home. And I looked at my wife, she smiled, and I woke up. I was furious. I did not want to wake up. I, I thought that's got to be what dying is like for a believer. Once you're there, you don't want to go back. I mean, even if there are loved ones behind, you know somehow it's all going to be taken care of. You don't want to go back, not after smelling and tasting and seeing this. The Apostle Paul said that. He said, look, I'm telling you, your mind can't conceive. Your ear has never heard. Your eyes have never seen. And he was caught up to paradise. He's the one that said, I don't know if I was in the body or out of the body, but I went somewhere. And I saw things and I heard things that I'm not even permitted to tell at all. So I had something similar to that happen to me. I'm not comparing myself to the Apostle Paul. My experience was not, not near as complete or as detailed as his or John's or Daniel's. But, but that happened to me. Now, it was so real and so profound it was unlike anything. I thought to myself, before I share this with anybody, if I ever do, I'm going to give it some days and some weeks to see if it kind of goes away. You know how you can have a vivid dream and you think, well, I'll never forget that. And then three months later, you don't remember anything. It's gone. Okay. So I just thought, let me just see if that happens. Well, the weeks went by and all I could do was think about it. I'm mean, Not all I could do, but often I would think about this and just, just kind of like go into ecstasy, just like... Just close my eyes. Oh, please let me go back, please. So I, I caught myself going to sleep at night, saying, Lord, could you take me back there? Just take me back there. But it, it, it never happened. I never had anything like that before then. I've never had anything like that since then. So here's what I shared with the congregation. Because now your, your viewers are listening. They say, well, that's pretty cool. But, you know, you could just have bad pizza that night. Or, or you could be lying. You could be making this up. So I, I know that. This is why I didn't share it. But here's what happened. Some years later, I don't know, three, four, five years later, my wife and I are very close. We have been since we were married. And we try every afternoon if we're together, I travel a lot, but if we're together, just sit down, have a cup of coffee, just talk for a little, an hour, just talk. So we were doing that one day, years after my dream. I, I, several times I started to tell her this dream, but I just, I just hesitated. I, I just thought, you know, I, I know my wife would believe me, but it's so amazing. How do you describe that? How do you describe that beyond a dream? How do you say it was a dream, but it wasn't? It was more than that. How do you describe that? I didn't know how to, I didn't know how to put it in words, so I didn't. Well, anyway, years later, sitting down, having coffee, my wife is there, and I, um, I said, I've, I, I got to tell you something that happened to me. And I said, please don't think I'm crazy. And she kind of laughed. Well, I already think that. You know, we, we've known each other since we were ten. So I mean, we're great buddies. And we're having a good time. And I said. Um, so I told her just what I related to you. She's just spellbound looking at me. She doesn't say a word. And I'm thinking, she thinks I'm nuts. But when I finished, these were her words. She said, you need to ask your grandson about his rapture dream. She says, I said, what do you mean? What are you talking about? She says, just, he's coming this afternoon. And um, he, he had it years ago when he was just a little boy. I don't know, like maybe three or four years old. And now, now he's much older. She says, but he's coming this afternoon to the house. She says, I'm not going to say a word to him. And um, she said, when he walks in the door, sit him down and just say to him, his name's Parker. Parker, tell me about your rapture dream. And she said, I want you to just be quiet and listen to him. I said, okay. I, I didn't have it. I said, why are you being so mysterious about this? She said, you're going to love it. You need to ask him. 
something well he's had something similar you know and uh, so he comes I ask him come hey come in come in and ask him before we go I think we're going to go play a little golf that day or something I said before we go I said sit down for me I want to talk to you and so I asked him, I said, uh, he, he calls his grandmother Giggy. He, that's how he was trying to say grandmother when he was one year old, I think. And it just stuck. So he, I said, Giggy said to ask you about your rapture dream. Well, he, he kind of snapped his head around and looked at her like, is it okay if I tell him? And he looked back, he said, sure. And he said, um, I've never told it to anybody but Giggy. And I said, okay, well, she told you to tell me because I've got something to tell you. And he said, okay. First words out of his mouth. Well, Papa, he said, I was standing in a field and I was, and I was looking up into the sky. Basically, he describes everything that happened to me. I mean, seriously, he said, I hear, he didn't call it the sounds of life. He said, I heard people behind me. He said, it sounded like a big city, but he said, I didn't turn around. I never saw it. I just heard it. And he said, but I'm looking at the sky. And he said, then the stars started moving. And I thought, how freaky is that? And he said, they started changing colors. And then he just describes the whole thing, except he, got, he has more detail. He gets it right up to the point where everything's kind of, the dimensions are shifting. The sky, the sky is like streaks are coming down, like the stars are falling from the heavens. And then he says, but I realized, Papa, that these weren't stars. These, these were angelic beings. And he says, and we were swept up. And he said, I was swept up. And he said, it was like I was in some kind of like a chariot or something. And he said, and there was an angel that was, had his arms around the whole thing. He said, I saw him. He said, I talked to him. And he says, and then we were whisked. And he says, and you and Gigi were there. And, 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 and I think he called it a couple of others, his mom, dad, people he knew. And he said, I saw their faces and, and we're just going. But he said, but it wasn't a long trip. It was instant. And the next thing you know, he says, we're in, and I forgot what he called it, paradise, I'm going to use the word, in this beautiful place, whatever a small kid would say. And he kind of describes it like me. And then he said, and then I woke up. And I said, that, and then my wife's over there now, she's got tears, and she's looking, she said, I told you. She says, y'all had the very same dream. She said, that's impossible, unless God's speaking. Well, this story gets more fantastic. So I'm listening to all this, I'm celebrating that. I said, have you told your mom and dad? They said, no. I said, do you mind if I tell them? He said, no, I don't mind at this point. So I told them, they were blown away by the whole thing. Okay, so that's cool, now it's a family thing. And of course, we all believe each other. Now, my grandson, when he was just little, I don't know, three or four, he didn't know anything about chariots and angels and rapture, but yet that's the dream he had. And he's describing it now that he's older, he's saying that's what happened. He didn't know anything about mine, so how could he have made up the stars and the colors and the people behind them? And, you know, it's, it's exactly the same as mine. So, but now it's in the family, and we're kind of glorying in it, celebrating in it, enjoying the peace of it. And we're all thinking, what does this mean? And, I'm, and we all kind of came to the same conclusion that this, God's revealing stuff, because you can get on the internet, read about Jesus visions, that Jews are having Jesus visions, Muslims are having rapture dreams, some people are seeing hell, some people are seeing heaven, they die, they come back, They're, it's all over the place. And it's just like exploding forward and people may say, well, maybe people have, in every generation have had this. Yeah, but not every generation has had, has had a thing called the internet and YouTube and, and Facebook. And so now it's everywhere, people are talking about it. So I told my family, I said, I don't know. I said, I'm a preacher of the word. We're a minister's family. We all have ministries. And through the mouth of a child, see? Psalm says, out of the mouths of babes, I will, you know, give my praise. Then through the mouth of, of I'm going to call myself an old man, you know, a pastor, preacher, a grandfather. Um, your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will dream dreams. Your old men will have visions. Doesn't the Word of God say that? Old Testament and New Testament. So here's this little boy, a child, a son, a grandson, who's prophesying, if you will, Papa, it, it was the rapture, okay? I'm an old man. I'm having a vision slash dream of something that matches exactly what he has. So we're just, just, just in the family. That's all we've told. Then, about five or six years later, we're just getting on with life. I'm preaching. I'm doing conferences. My son comes with me. He's a grown man. You've probably seen him or met him. We are at a prophecy conference in Minneapolis, Minnesota. It's in the spring. It has snowed that spring. Snows all over the ground. The people in Minnesota are mad about it. I'm loving it. Having a great time. Conference center packed out. It's a big church, and so it's packed out. I don't know, it probably held a thousand people, and it was packed. Four years huge. They had our table set up for the speakers at the foyer. So I had just finished preaching, 
and I'm out in the foyer, and because I had just finished, people flocked around my table. Not that I'm such a great speaker, it's just I had just finished. So I was like, come out, I go to my table, had, a, had written a couple of books, and there they are, boom, they're just piled in. My son's standing over to my left. You know, um, just like at my book table, I don't sell books, but I'm there to talk to people, minister to people, pray with them, maybe sign them if they want their book signed. But my son, is he's handling all the money and the credit cards and everything and answering people's questions about the books. So that's going on at the table. Crowd of people, people right, right in front are talking to me. Hey, can you sign this? And what's this book about? And, you know, so we're having those conversations. And just I'm looking over the crowd. I'm tall like you are, not as tall as you are, but I'm, I'm tall. And so I can see right over the crowd. And I see this young woman making her way through the back of the crowd, kind of snaking her way through, kind of, kind of sweetly pushing people aside, trying to get up front. And I'm thinking, bless her heart, she wants to come up here bad, but I'm thinking somebody's going to slap her because, I mean, you know, everybody's trying to get to me. She's just breaking ahead. And I'm thinking, oh, he, okay, there's always one in every crowd, right, you know? And so I'm thinking that about her, bless her heart. And I see when she gets closer, she's, she's crying. Not boohooing yet, but just tears, and her eyes are swelled. And I said, oh, bless her heart. She's got some, some heart issues here. She's wanting to talk to the preacher, you know. Well, she got almost down to the front line. She was standing a couple rows back and looking at me, just kind of looking at me like she wanted to engage me. And then I saw her just kind of get discouraged, and she turned and walked back through. And I'm thinking, oh, gosh, I, I, I wanted so bad to say, wait a minute, wait a minute. But I couldn't because I'm signing books and people were talking. But I'm watching all of this. And she goes out. I watch her go out the foyer to the big front doors of the church, and she, go, she, she goes out. And I said, well, I'll never see her again. I said, Lord, I, I don't have a clue what that was about. But, and Brandon said something about, did you see that girl that left? I said, yeah, I saw it. I said, I don't know what that was about. And he said, yeah, I don't either. So we're going on. Well, anyway, after a while, the crowd's thinning a little bit. But about 15 minutes later, I'm just still looking over the crowd, talking to people. The door's open. I'm seeing people come and go. I see her again. And she comes in, and she starts kind of making her way through the crowd again, but it's much less now, so she's, it's a lot easier. And I'm thinking, all right, now this time, I'm going to talk to her, because obviously something's on her mind. She finally gets up, she comes and stands on the side of the table, and I'm signing my last book here, and she's, Pastor, can I talk to you? And she's still got swollen eyes and tears, she's wiping tears off her cheek. I said, yes, ma'am. I said, what's your name? She said, my name's Veronica. And I said, well, what's on your heart? I took her hand and said, what's on your heart? I said, something's bothering you. And Brandon's still kind of, you know, he's putting the money in, he's stacking the books up, and, but he's keeping his eye on old pops over here, you know. She says, while you were preaching, God spoke to me. And she says, God, God, I've never heard the voice of God before. And she says, I didn't hear it in my ears, but I heard it in here. And she said, he told me that I had to talk to you, that you had the answer for me, that you would know the answer to my question. Well, I had no clue where she was going. And, and so I wanted to be humble about it. Like, I, I don't know everything, <laughs> but if God told you, maybe I will know. And she says, it's, it's about... It's about a dream I had, and God told me that you could interpret it. Now, remember, this has been years since I've had these. I had the dream and taught my sons. I'm not even thinking about that. I mean, it's been years, five or six, seven years. And all I'm hearing is I need you to interpret a dream. Well, I know that that's done, and I know God can give people that gift, and I know it's in the Bible. But I've never advertised or considered myself to be an interpreter of dreams. I don't even know my own dreams, you know. Most of now, the rapture dream is the one dream in my life. I understand that. But I've had other things where I've had to just say, you know, I just, I ate something bad tonight. That's all I can think. You know, I, I mean, it seems like it might be spiritual, but I just can't figure that out. So I just forget about it. Well, she says, I want you to interpret this dream. God told me you can interpret it. And I'm thinking, all right, either she didn't hear from God or God's getting ready to give me a gift to interpret this girl's dream. So I'm, I'm ready. I said, well, just tell me and I'll tell you. I said, now I'm not going to try to pretend like I know something. If I don't have a clue, I will tell you. And I hope it doesn't hurt your feelings. But I said, I, I, don't, I don't jerk people's chains on that. If I don't know what it is, I, she says, okay. She said, I was standing in a field. When she said those words, I didn't know where she was going to go. But my son grabbed my jacket and he just kind of like, dad, listen to this now. She says, and I was looking up in the sky and I was looking at the stars, and when she said that, I mean, I'm, I'm about to break down. And I'm looking at her, and she's, she's, and then she starts describing the whole scenario. I hear the people behind me, I hear children. She said, I wasn't allowed to look. And she said, then the stars started moving. Now, 
my son Brandon, who's the father of my grandson, who knows the, all of that, he, he just says, he grabs my arm again, he says, oh my gosh, Dad. And, and, and Veronica stops and says, do you know what this is about? And Brandon said something like, he's had the same dream. And, and she goes, what? And I said, yes, finish what you're saying. And she says, well, I'm almost finished. She says, so the stars come and they fall out of the sky. And then she says, and, and she says, and I just screamed and I got on the ground and covered my head and the star, and then I woke up. And she says, what, what was that? She says, it was so real. This happened to me months ago. And she said, I told my husband and we came to this conference. She said, I would need an answer to this. She said, it was so real. I can't get it out of my mind. And you're and she says, you're telling me you had the same dream? I said, exactly, except my dream went further and I know what it is. And she goes, oh my gosh, God did speak to me. You know, I said, Veronica, I know what the answer is to this dream. And I said, now this is a thousand people in Minneapolis. I'm from Florida. And, and, you know, and she describes my dream and my grandson's dream. And I saw her come and go and I asked her, I said, why'd you leave? She said, well, I just, I got scared. And, and then I couldn't get to you and my husband and my children. I got, she said, I've got little children. They're out in the car. She said, I went out there and just bawled. And my husband said, you must go back in. You must talk to him. God told you to. So she said, I finally got up the courage and came back. And she said, I'm so glad. So she says, what's the dream? And I said, it was the rapture. And I said, apparently, I need to talk to you about your relationship with the Lord because apparently you were getting ready to miss it because you were. And she starts crying. She says, I've just given my life to the Lord recently. And she says, yes, I, I agree. She says, and, and I need to come back to the Lord. She said, I've been so far from the Lord. Um, uh, and she says, and, and, and that's all I can think is that God's trying to tell me something bad is getting ready to happen if I don't get right with him. And she said, I feel like I need to be in ministry. She said, I don't mean preaching or teaching. She said, I just need to be investing my life somehow in the gospel ministry. And she says, and I said, so I said, well, let me tell you what happens after the stars fall. I said, those are not stars, those were angelic beings. And it was the rapture. And we do go up and we bust through dimensions and barriers like, you know. And, and I said, and then the next thing you know, you're in paradise. And she said, oh my gosh. And I said, well, let me tell you, I can't even describe to you what it smells like, what it looks like, what it sounds like. And she says, I knew, I knew, I knew it was probably had something to do with the rapture. And, and I said, well, yes. I said, that's all I can tell you. That's all I know. But I said, my grandson has had this same, exact same dream. I've had it. Um, my, my, my wife, his grandmother, witnessed him telling it to her. Years went by. He tells it to me. I tell it to his mom and dad. We all go over it together, talk about it. And now more years have gone by. You come to me from Minneapolis, Minnesota, and you're standing here telling me the same dream and that God told you I knew what it was. I said, so this is not a coincidence. This is not bad pizza. This is God speaking. And then she said, well, I'm not really from Minneapolis. She says, um, she says I come from uh, Peru. And I said, Peru? This is what makes the story even more fantastic. I said, M me and my church have been involved in Peru for 17 years at that point in huge mission work. And... Um, uh, we've got a school for children that can't go to school, and we finance the whole thing. We go down there, we do crusades, we take clothing, and back in then they really needed it. We're in a very poor area. We take clothing and medicine, we take medical missionaries. And I said, we're very attached to the people. I said, I've watched little three and four year olds grow up into young men and women, and they graduate from our school. Some of them get scholarships to college, and families are saved. We get them in a church there. And I said, so I'm very attached to Peru. This is amazing, uh, Veronica. I said, where are you from? She says, well, it's just, a, it's just a, it's a place you've probably never heard of. It's Comas, Lima, Peru. I said, that's where our school is. Our school is in Comas. She said, what? I said, it's called the Jack Goldfarb Christian School, named after a, a, a associate pastor of mine that's passed away who was from Peru. And he, she says, I just live a few blocks down the street from there. I know people that work there. I said, this is getting freakier by the moment. You know, so we had a conversation. We loved on each other and prayed. And, and I asked her, I said, can I tell this story? Can I use your name? She says, yes, pastor, please feel free. Maybe that's a part of how I can be used for God's kingdom. But, so I've shared it with my church privately several times. I say privately. I mean, I, not on TV or radio or at a conference, just at my church. And, and every time I do, they're blown away by it. And then I have people come up to me just 
privately and say, I didn't have a dream like that, but I had a rapture dream too, and I can't get it out of my mind. So even at this conference, I've had probably 20 people, and there's you know, hundreds of people here, but I had about 20 people come to my table over the past couple of days saying, I didn't have that dream, but I had something very similar where I was caught up. And thank you for sharing that, because now I know I'm not going crazy. See, there's no telling what God's speaking to people, His people, but people don't know how to share it with an unbelieving world. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. No, that's my story. It's, it's witnessed. You know, that's, that's once Veronica told me that, then I knew. It was like the Lord was trying to get me to share it before, I think. But when Veronica came in Minneapolis, Minnesota, totally unconnected to me, my son is standing right there witnessing it. Then she tells me she's from Comus. <laughs> then I knew. I mean, God is just saying, would you please share what I gave you? So here at the conference, first time I've shared it. I know some people watching this will still not believe it. And I, and I, I, I mean, I can't, I can't help it. I can't care about that, whether they believe it or not. I know what happened. I know what my grandson told me. I know what Veronica told me. Every one of those were witnessed by, by people. So, don't, so what does this mean? I don't set dates. I don't think that dream necessarily meant it was going to happen in my lifetime, necessarily. Feels like it did, but I could be proven wrong on that. I think God's just getting his church ready. I think he's just, I'm a preacher, so I'm somebody that would share it, and now I have. Now it's going to be on YouTube, it's going to go to the world. So I think all over the world, God is just getting his people ready to understand that the time is getting short. Get right with Jesus Christ. If you are not right with the Lord, get right with him. People might be watching, say, how do I get right with him? Very quickly, Romans 10, 9. If you would confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Romans 10, 13, and whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord like this shall be saved. Today can be the day of your salvation. Confess with your mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. I repent of my sin. You were raised from the dead. You died on Calvary's cross for me. Please save me. And all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is Pastor Carl Gallops. And that is my story. It really happened.